Hey everybody, welcome back to Dave's Small Engines. It's been a while since I've made a video, but I wanna show you guys what I've been up to. This is my steel MS441C chainsaw. This is the M-Tronic version. Uh, I love this saw. I've had it for about a year now. It's my only large saw. Given that it's about 10 years old now, um, there's been a couple little things that I've noticed in terms of the performance, a little bit of a stumble on the idle, um, not revving out as fast as I think it should. Uh, these M-Tronic carburetors are pretty awesome and it should be working a little bit better than what it is. So I think it's time for a carburetor rebuild. So let's dig into it and get it rebuilt. All right, so the carburetor repair kit that I'm using is the K10HD. This is an OEM Walbro kit. Uh, you can buy different variations of this kit. I actually picked this one up from Donnie Boy uh, 73 uh, my good buddy there. Uh, he told me, you know what, Dave, do it right. Buy the proper OEM Walbro carburetor kit and you'll have much better luck when you do your repair. Okay, so let's dig into it. Pop the rear cover off. It's a good time to clean your air filter at this point as well. I'm gonna leave it on here for a second. So the next thing we wanna do is take out these one, two, three, four T27 bolts. This is a purpose-built steel T27 T-wrench. I absolutely love it. The Amtronic carburetor I'm finding when I'm working on this unit is a little bit more intricate to work on just given the wiring but that's no big deal so I actually like to keep these screws all together set everything over here make it nice easier to work on okay so here's our carburetor behind here you can see it there so let's go ahead and take the air filter off awesome steel HD filter this one looks pretty good could use a blowout maybe. Next, the air filter holder. This is another awesome tool, the steel eight mil, but it's got a shallow edge here, which means that you can get into the spaces that you can't with a normal eight mil socket. So I found this to be super useful. I like to leave these nuts in here as well. Then the carburetor bracket, which is mounted to anti-vibration bits on either side. And then this piece should just pop off. There we are, there's our carburetor. So you can see there's the M-Tronic wiring. Kind of cool how it all works. Okay, so the next trickiest part I find is this cute little throttle linkage down here. So there is a cable that runs from here up underneath through this brown cable here and then into the throttle actuation arm. So the best way that I've found to do it is to actually just hold this linkage down with your finger. Yeah, you can see a really good shot there. Grab this with a needle nose. And then just help it down out of the way, just like that. So now the, the brass end here is out and the throttle is now disconnected. Okay, I just learned this lesson the hard way. Crack your fuel tank open. There's still fuel in my tank here, but what we're doing is letting the air pressure out of the fuel system so that when you pull the carburetor off, the fuel line doesn't start shooting fuel out because there's pressure from the atmosphere. So um, there's two, two hoses on the side here, one for the impulse tube and one for the um, fuel line. And then we just gotta kinda gingerly Pull it off. Keep in mind we have wiring attached here, so we're not quite out of the woods yet. And there it is, the M-Tronic carburetor. 
All right, now that we're at this stage, we are connected to the Mtronic wiring harness. Uh, you can actually leave this on if you want, um, but for me, I'm going to do a full clean using a ultrasonic cleaner. So I think it's best to get the electronic trigger unit removed. It's two T20 bolts. All right, don't need the T20 any longer. And then this is the electronic trigger unit or the control unit here. There's a clip on this side and it just pops off just like that. And here is the black solenoid for the earlier versions of the Mtronic saw. You'll hear a lot of people having trouble with these solenoids. This is exactly where it is and how to replace it. You would then use a T10, I believe it is, security screw to remove that bracket there and take the solenoid out if you're doing a replacement. Okay, then we will take the back plate off here, which is the secondary air intake. Just to give us some room. Nice, don't forget about that o-ring that's in there all right let's tear it apart so the bottom will be the pump portion of the carburetor and on the pump portion of the carburetor ooh, this doesn't look too bad actually but there is some dirt See that, that's not great. So, and you can see some indentations and perforations there, which this isn't actually terrible, but that's what we're seeing there. A couple little indents, which means that the material has stretched over time from movement. Now remember, the pump diaphragm always goes against the carb body and then the gasket on the outside and it's the opposite on the metering end. So let's take that apart now. So, so far I'm not too concerned. I've seen way worse, caked in sawdust and sludge from years of use and abuse. Let's see what the metering diaphragm has to offer. Oh, okay. So this might be one of the reasons I'm having a little bit of trouble. You can see there are some creases in the metering diaphragm. No dirt in there though, that's good to see. And the metering diaphragm is still malleable, but as you'll see, there are some creases here. And I'll show you the brand new one as a comparison. Now this isn't terrible guys, but it just means that things have worn out over time, which is to be expected. This is a consumable. I'm going to peel this gasket off. That is the metering diaphragm gasket and then <clears throat> this is the metering lever there is a spring underneath here and the metering lever over time can get worn out as you can see there is wear marks right here from where the metering diaphragm has been contacting it over and over this side. So see that right there? That has been wearing against the metering lever. And over time, again, tolerances change and the metering lever 
might bend down a little bit or the spring might lose its compression ability and then things don't work exactly the way they're supposed to when they're brand new. Now, with that said, this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this carburetor. Not really too concerned. Let's continue taking it apart. The screw here that holds the metering lever and needle, as you can see. See the needle there? Move up and down. So every time there's an impulse or a rotation from the crank, the metering lever is actuated by the metering diaphragm and it allows fuel into the carburetor. Pretty neat. But again, things wear out over time. And they get clogged up over time too. Think of the conditions that a chainsaw works in on a daily basis. Okay. So, needle, metering lever, pin, and then, of course, the spring. Now, because this is a Amtronic carburetor, I'm going to take the solenoid off the side before I stick the whole thing in the ultrasonic cleaner. So let's do that next. Okay, so it's just this T10 security bolt here. If you've got the right bit, comes out no problem. That's just to prevent people from tinkering where they shouldn't. Not so sure it's necessary. If you're getting this far into a carburetor rebuild, you probably know at least a little bit about what you're doing. And then the solenoid, a little bit of help from a flathead. Be careful, this is plastic. Comes right out. Now this carburetor is ready to go into the ultrasonic cleaner or to have its orifices and passageways sprayed out with carb cleaner. Okay, so the carburetor here is fresh out of the ultrasonic cleaner. If you don't have one and you do a lot of small engine repairs, I definitely recommend you pick one up. Squeaky clean, still really hot actually. But I wanted to show you the comparison between the old and the new, left being the old, right being the new. So you can see kind of the perforations from movement over time. And this one is perfectly smooth. The gaskets, of course, this is not that big of a deal. This one was on and I had to peel it off of the metering plate. This is the new one. But here's the big difference. Old metering diaphragm versus new. So you can see how, I mean, this is still very pliable and probably usable, but this may explain the um, slight issues that I was having with overall performance. This is what the brand new diaphragm looks like. All right, so now that everything is cleaned up, let's put it all back together. I guess we can start with the solenoid. Clips in like so. Okay, then the new spring and needle and lever. These can be a bit tricky. Usually I like to get the pivot pin in. Assemble the lever like so. And then drop it in as one unit. Just like that. Then put the screw in. Perfect. Okay, as I mentioned before, for the metering side of things in the metering diaphragm, the gasket goes on first, like this, and then the diaphragm. See this button right here, that extruded piece? That's what makes contact with the lever. 
So we have to make sure that is set up properly. Now, did I do this right? No, that makes more sense. Nope. See how the screw holes are off there? That's kind of how you know if you're off base. Things don't line up. Again, doesn't line up. So we'll take our time and we do it properly. There it is. You have the two dowels that help line things up. And the diaphragm sits just like that. And when you push it up and down, you can actually see it contacting the metering lever. Pretty cool. Okay, next we put the metering cap on and the four screws that come with it. Don't tighten it all the way down until you have all four threaded in. Do a cross pattern, makes things nice and happy. And again, we are not torquing these things to the moon. These are small aluminum pieces. If you strip that, you're in big trouble. Pump diaphragm goes on to the carb body directly and then the gasket on top which is the opposite of the metering side of things. And then the cap. It only goes on one way, folks, so... It takes a bit of time to play with it, not a big deal. Now, you'll probably see the screen over here. If this was super crudded up and full of debris, I would probably replace that, but as long as it's clean, you're usually pretty good to go. So everything's good there. And we'll just put our secondary intake valve back on. Again, not over tightening, but making sure everything is happy. And there we have it, a rebuilt steel Mtronic HD carburetor. Let's throw it back in the saw. Okay, so first things first, let's get the control unit back onto the solenoid. You'll see there's a little notch right here. This has to slide into the solenoid. That's how you know it's in the appropriate orientation. A little bit of help for the wiring there. And the control unit sits right back on, just like that. Two T20s. Okay, so the control unit is back on now. Wiring in through here, just like that. Then we can mess around with this wiring once it's all back together. Remember how the orientation of the carburetor goes? Fuel, sorry, impulse and fuel. Fuel, impulse, throttle. Slide it back on. 
make sure that it's tight here so you, you know that the fuel and the impulse lines are connected appropriately. Run your wiring back through. Don't get too heavy with the screwdriver here, folks, because you can easily wreck these wires. Just use a fingernail, I find that to be appropriate. Sometimes a bit of help with a flathead, but you really don't want to wreck one of these wires. Expensive and costly for time and also for money. The connector side of things goes right into this groove here. I like to stuff the black wire in first and then kind of hold it in place with the red, just like that. And again, you're gonna use a flathead, just be real ginger here. Delicate wiring, just to kind of make sure it's in the grooves. You don't want it to pop out. go we've got the black wire that goes to the ground here there we are now throttle is next grab those long needle nose find where that throttle is There. Throttle linkage attached. Mission accomplished. All right, now that our wiring and carburetor are all situated, throttle works. Now it's time for the carburetor bracket, or at least the anti vibration portion. Make sure everything lines up to the two notches right there. It's the two. 8 mil nuts. make sure all of the choke functions are working. Air filter holder, again, to eight mil nuts. filter rear casing again all of our t27s are still in there so be careful when we're putting it on if you've got everything lined up nicely they should go in really easy There it is, my friends. The saw is back together. The carburetor is rebuilt. Let's see if we can get it started. Wow. <laughs> 
ね。